I am representing New Economic School Georgia, which is a free market oriented think tank. We are operating since 2001. We mainly focusing on education, but also trying to promote ideas, ideas of freedom via different channels, research, TV interviews, and so on and so on. We are targeting different audience, students, politicians, and many others to bring them toward more economic freedom. And this is our major topic, because when we speak about something, we are always mentioning it's about economic freedom. Economic freedom is like underline of our work. And it's not accidental, because from very, very beginning when our organization started, we understood importance. We immediately found out this research, the friends who are now, and then um, thinking in the same way, and that we decided it's the right way, and it's the right chance to use. Well, um, fortunately, those ideas were already well spread worldwide. Many countries already have experience in this direction, and they succeeded. If we will go and check, we can have a lot of proofs that in countries with more economic freedom, we have prosperity, wealth, health, comfort for the people. And this research, which is represented by our friends from Pfizer Institute, very concretely saying so. All those gaps are just displaying how it works and that it is works. Major result of those researches. Economic freedom is prerequisite for growth and development. It's, it is chance to increase prosperity for all, not just a few. It reduces the poverty in general for everyone. Increase political, civil, and other rights and freedoms. Improves general quality of life. It's prerequisite for human development. And all those were known in Georgia as well. And critical mass of people started to think how to implement. Since 2004, Georgia aimed to reform country toward economic freedom. It was political choice. It, in, until now, it's like daily job of government. If you, if you go to the governmental sites, you will note they have displaying results, they are discussing the results, they are prouding about the, uh, um, achievement and so on. Media, politicians, NGOs are almost every day in different uh, levels discussing this issue. Not only economic freedom of uh, Fraser, but other related researches like doing business, Transparency International, and so on and so on. So all this is under very strict interest. In 2004, Georgia was quite a disastrous country in terms of corruption, law development, minimum hope. But there were some people, like my good friend, Kaha Bendukidze, he unfortunately died. He was architect of economic uh, reforms in Georgia, and he was very known in this uh, area, in, I mean, uh, in this sphere. He said that in 2004, it was even not imaginable how Georgia can be reformed. It was backward country. Some people call it like a uh, country which is not sustainable. But then we started to reform. And now Georgia is among top 10 in economic freedom of the world by Fraser Institute, and also is why high uh, by doing business index and other indexes which are uh, doing the same kind of researches. Georgia did it step by step, but already a few years we are in the top. Not just one year or two, but already almost uh, eight years. And it's good achievement. It's visible. 
invisible in daily life. But let me tell you what exactly was done. <clears throat> Everything in short time and in same time. Tax reforms. We uh, decreased tax burden and we have only six taxes. It's simply to monitor, simply to pay, and it's not big burden of, on the companies. Even more, profit tax is zero if you are reinvesting. So it's like big chance for the company to come and invest right now. Privatization are very high scale. Land and even hospitals included. It was even discussion and still discussion about privatization and railroad and so on. So it no, no like uh, sphere which preserve it for the state. So all open. Energy sector reform. We have chance to use energy like 24 hours, which was not possible until the reforms. We have shortage of electricity. Privatization of system was to K role, play K role. Supply is private, production is private, and it's, uh, it's growing. Very important points. Unilateral liberalization, visa liberalization, Georgia opened the door for everyone. No visa, no problem to work. Very first step in Georgia, you can start work. We don't have uh, labor restrictions. No restrictions for investment. No restrictions for the trade. We unilaterally liberalized trade with everyone. Now, Georgia has free trade agreement with European Union, China, Russia, some other countries, and now India is approaching. But already 2004, 6 Georgia unilaterally simplified free trade uh, relationship with everyone. So we said, we like to trade with everyone. No preconditions, just trade, just work. Some more. <coughs> we, unilater back. No, back, back. Yeah. we unilaterally accepted some regulations of European Union and some other countries, in for, for instance, in pharmacy and construction sector. For instance, medication, if it's approved in European Union, is automatically approved in Georgia. There's no reason to uh, do some laboratory work to approve the, uh, the same stuff. So we uh, sort of outsource at your uh, <laughs> efforts. Georgia started open sky policy, which means that Georgian airports are open for everyone without any precondition. School choice, voucher, voucher system was introduced in Georgia, which means that financing goes via students, but not via to the directly the schools. Uh, People can choose a school and put money, which is granted from the state, to that school. It applies to high school and universities as well. Health insurance was introduced. Administration was cut it and more clear, more transparent. Police, police reform was huge reform. In one day, about 30,000 old policemen were fired out and new policemen were hired. And it was really dramatic change. And it was vis immediately, very fast, they visible. And now the police is one of the most trusted state institutions in the country. Defense. Defense moved to the contract principle, mostly. Especially the army and like uh, acting army part is 100% contract. Some uh, drafted, but mostly contracts. Very important was deregulation and simplification of licensing. We eliminated a lot of barriers for the business, from 900 to 100. So it's dramatic change. Now it's easy to do business. You can register a company in a few hours, and you can have a tax code and open an account in the same time and start business in the same day. So it's easy. Now, soon, we will have electronic ones, so you can register the company even sitting here in this room by uh, your cell phone. It will be very soon. 
one window principle was introduced. It means that if you need something from the state, you go to just one place, apply, and you will receive all you need. You don't need to run to one, to other offices. It's simple. And, and service was very nicely organized. Pleasant, no lines, easy to understand, and very comfortable. Labor codes, we simplified. We give chance employee and employer to cooperate based on agreement. Minimum state intervention, maximum labor freedom, and many, many other good stuff. So as the end, Georgia got very, very important uh, uh, results, and those results are uh, quite obvious. Uh, so what we had? Grow and new markets. Constrained corruption, minimum corruption, is not visible. I'm lecturing time to time, of course, and just about two months ago, I had like crowd about 100 people, and I, it was young people, students mostly. I asked, do you have any experience in corruption? Daily? None of them said that they had any single case of corruption, practice of corruption. So it's like enormous. And I would like to say here, corruption is illness of high burden of taxation and regulation, and not cultural or religion. So it can be done everywhere, if it's political will. <clears throat> Georgian reforms were accepted by many institutions worldwide, like Fraser Institute, Heritage Institute, Foundation, and many others, same time with European Union and World Bank and many others. All of them clearly noticing all those changes. And what's most important for me, that Georgian, Georgians got self-confidence. We understood that we can do more. And here, I would like to know that all of those stuff were done under very serious political difficulties, especially aggression from Russia, which you mentioned it already. But it's not started with military activity. It was started by economic embargo in 2006. And it's, the embargo itself ended in 2013, but still we have the difficulties. The Georgians were not allowed to go to Russia in general. It was like visa problem. In addition, war in 2008, and then occupation of two Georgian provinces, which go until now. Plus, it was world crisis, an economic crisis, 2008. It was exactly time of reforms. And of course, it was quite big skepticism from the outside. The donors like IMF, World Bank, even the European Union, they were very skeptical when Georgians were speaking about reforms. Most reforms in Georgia was done not because of uh, indications from the outside, but because of our internal ideas. Now, we did reforms, but it's important to have preservation, like safeguard. And what we did was also very important. We constitutionally guaranteed that those reforms will be preserved. Law on economic freedom was issued in Georgia, still enacting, and constitutional article number 94 guarantees that without referendum, it's not possible to raise taxes in Georgia. It's very important. Maybe it's only one country in the world have such constitutional uh, amendments. I will skip some uh, files because uh, I'm, I wanted to may go detail, but no time for that. And uh, here I would like to tell you about our role, role of New Economic School. One more. So what we did, we just organized a lot of activity of different sort, even this sort. We organized three such big activity in Georgia with a lot of experts, foreign politicians, and uh, NGO activists to support Georgian reforms. We organized a lot of visits of foreign experts. Experienced people like Martla from Estonia, Ruth Richardson from 
New Zealand. Andre was many times like formal advisor to the president. Vernon Smith, Nobel Prize winner. So many, many good people, knowledgeable people, visited Georgia, supported our reforms. We helped the state to bring good people to the offices. Former our students participated in the reforms. Fresh people, like under 25 age, but they did a great job. Now about Europe. Of course, Europe is in advance, very advanced in economic freedom. Most of countries, if you see here with uh, stars, they are European countries. Of course, they are high. But unfortunately, not as high as some other countries. New Zealand, Singapore, Hong Kong are leading, and Europe has potential. Regulations are killing chances, I would say. And I believe it should be really, really changed. And you are capable to do it. In conclu for conclusion, economic freedom matters. It really gives results. Reforms are possible in, in any circumstances, and Georgia is proving it. And very important, intellectual leadership. Without Kaha Bendukidze, without other leaders, without strong support of society, it will be not possible. In Georgia, it will be not possible anywhere. So your leadership is very important. Someone should say, we can. This is direction, and move. I hope I gave you some overview about Georgia. My colleague will continue. And I will be very happy to cooperate with you. Keep contact and be in touch. Thank you.